Hey guys, it's Walker with Commercial Acoustics here for the second video in our educational series. And today we're going to talk about how sound transfers through a wall. Okay, so a few things happen when sound is transferring through a wall. Um, the amount of sound that's blocked we call STC, or sound transmission class. Um, basically, you've got a simple schematic here. On the left-hand side is the source noise, which can be talking or music or TV. And the right-hand side will be the receive side. So it could be an office or an apartment or something like that. The first thing that happens is a noise is emitted on the source side. So from the speaker here, we'll say that it comes and hits the wall. And the first question is, what happens with that sound? Uh, some of it gets reflected back. Less than the intensity of the sound that hits the wall, but a significant portion depending on what the wall is made up of. Other sound uh, turns into vibrational energy in the wall. So it, get, it hits the first layer of drywall, let's say for simplicity, and vibrates the wall. Some of that's turned into heat, but most of it either transmits through the drywall into the cavity or finds the closest stud to allow it to pass through the wall. So the question becomes, once the sound's in the wall, how does it pass through? Uh, sure, some of it can go from the inside of this drywall through the cavity, and if there's bat insulation in the cavity, a lot of that will be absorbed. Um, as it hits the newest layer of drywall, it will reflect back and forth and become absorbed by that bat, or some of it will also once again propagate through this layer of drywall. However, the path of least resistance is certainly through the studs themselves. Um, you can see how wide this 2x4 stud is. If it's a 2x6, it's equally ineffective at stopping the transmission of sound. So this is a highway or a short circuit through the wall, and you can see a significant amount of noise will pass through the studs. So another consideration is stud selection. Um, you can see 2x4s and 2x6 studs, as I mentioned, are very bad insulators of sound and transmit a lot of sound through the wall. It conducts it like a short circuit uh, of electrical charge is you have a very nice strong connection between both gypsum boards, which allows a significant am amount of sound transfer through those studs. Um, metal gauge studs are actually a lot better at sound insulation because you can see the cross section of a 25 gauge or, or a 20 gauge or 16 gauge stud are going to be much narrower cross sections than a 2x4, um, which is why they're so much more effective at stopping sound transfer. Uh, also stud spacing is really important. If these studs are 24 inches apart rather than 16, that's going to allow a lot less sound transfer as well because the sound has to travel a lot further from the initial impact on the gypsum wall board to the nearest stud. So a takeaway is that you want to move to metal studs, 25 gauge if possible, and you also want to try to move to 24 inches on center. And both of those changes will greatly improve the STC of your wall. So a common approach that end customers use and architects as well is to use resilient channel to break that connection between the gypsum and the wood stud or, or metal stud. Uh, RC can, can be an effective way to improve the STC because you see it breaks the connection, the rigid to rigid connection between the stud and the wall board. However, it should never be used on walls that require a fastener uh, into blocking. So if you have um, cabinets or shelving or even a TV, anything that needs to go into the stud, what happens is that the screw needs to now penetrate from the wallboard into the stud directly, which will crush the RC. And you'll end up having gypsum to stud connection that way, or a instead of a single flange RC, the second leg of the RC will also connect, greatly diminishing the STC of the wall. So another approach to consider, which we recommend to a lot of architect clients, is the use of a mass-loaded vinyl membrane. This is sandwiched between the drywall and the stud. The benefit is twofold. Uh, you add mass to the partition. It's a significantly heavy product, about one pound per square foot. So there's, there's a significant amount more mass to reflect the initial wave of sound hitting the wall. So you'll get a more significant reflection. 
But beyond that, the sound that gets into the initial layer of drywall has a harder time transmitting into the studs. That's because mass loaded vinyl is also a softer, more flexible product that doesn't allow sound to tra transmit vibrationally through it. So that kind of overviews how sound transmits through a wall. Uh, the initial amount of noise energy hits the near side of the wall on the source side, and it's either reflected or transmitted vibrationally through the drywall and finds either the nearest stud or transmits through the drywall into the cavity and from there out into the receive side, from which it will transmit radially. What STC is acceptable in your case really depends on the adjacency. Is it an office, an apartment, condominium, or just retail? Uh, that'll go into our next video in the series discussing acceptable STCs based on adjacencies. Until then, thanks for joining.